What is up, everybody? Huge Odin One, also owner of the South North Dakota Dragons, here with another presentation for the Discord Football League. This time, it's this is going to be the Season Ten Week Thirteen recap. As we are now down thirteen weeks, we have one left until the playoffs begins. So let's. So now we get to finalize who makes the playoffs and who doesn't. So today's agenda is going to be pretty, It's going to be simple. We go through the week thirteen scores, then the week thirteen standings to check out the playoff picture, determine who the local of the week is, the reveal the week the final week of the season, and ultimately the toad tier list. So let's begin. We're going to begin with the week 13 scores. Here we are right here. Um, out of, we only, we've played, the, the amount of games that have been played this week is three, which is two less than last week. So the DFL did not play as many week games last week, which is this week. So let's try, I don't know if we're going to need to do better next week because the week 14 is subject to end any time. All the important games are done. But as you can see, the Arizona Gunslingers versus the Denver Defenders. The Denver Defenders def defeated the Arizona Gunslingers at home, 82-36. The Winnipeg Winterhawks defeated the Death Valley Bloodhounds, 111-91 on the road. And then, of course, you got the Pittsburgh Temper defeated. Pulling off, well, this was actually because of a forfeit, because the Mafia didn't play. So yeah, we have now have seen another DFL shutout, even though it's only 7-0. So, now let's check the standings. For the NDC West... Um, no one's clinched the division yet, but the third and final team has been eliminated. The third team to be eliminated out of the division is now the South Dakota Vipers, which means the Seattle Skyline have clinched the playoffs. And for the second season in a row, we will have the same three teams going to the playoffs. From the NDC West. Not in the same order though. Now it's just a battle. For who wins the division. It's going to be between the Glaciers and the Marauders. It all depends on what goes down. This week. And the winner of the division. Will get a first round bye. Moving on to the next division, the NDC East. It's a showdown between the Kings and the Falcons. Um, because if the Kings lose and the Falcons win, the Falcons will make the playoffs. And that depends on um, who wants to play and who doesn't. Now, another team has been eliminated from this division, however, this week as well, and that is the Boston Ravens. So it's now down to just these two teams right here. And the Quetzales and Jayhawks have already clinched the playoffs as well. Moving on to the ADC West. This one's the most surprising one. Not a single team has clinched the playoffs as of week 13. One week could send the team that's in first place right now, the Gunslingers, to missing the playoffs in fourth place in one week, depending on what goes down. And this is all because of head-to-head. -head. Um, I believe the Gunslingers do play the Bobcats, meaning if they lose, they're technically below them.
because they because the gunslingers have already lost to them once. They lose again, and they and the Bobcats will have head to head advantage. So it's a definitely a sight to see. It's a very it's a crazy sight to see. All right, moving on to the ADC East. It's a tie between these two teams. They both have the same record. That both the Temper and the Mafia have the same record. The only difference is, um, it's gonna be a battle to win for them to win the division. Now we all. Now I was brainwashed to thinking this was gonna happen in week thirteen for one of them to win the division, but it turns out that they both have the same record now. Which means if one of them loses and one of them wins, the one who won wins the division. If they both win, the temper wins the division. If they both lose, the temper will also win the division. If so, there's one way the mafia can win the division, and that is if they win and the temper lose. So that will be an interesting battle to be taking place in the ADC East. Now, as you can see, the Philadelphia Cougars have now been eliminated as well. But they've been eliminated as of last... They've been eliminated as of last week. So it's nothing new. Now for the Week 13 playoff picture. Here's the bracket. I don't know if much has changed other than the ADC side. Um, you have the Ottawa Hydra versus the Winnipeg... Um, Winterhawks, the De and then also yeah, I got now have the Denver Defenders versus the London Mafia in the first round, as now the Pittsburgh Temper are set to win a first round bye because they lead the division. <sighs> Same with the Arizona Gunslingers, but you never know. Anything can happen. They could even miss the playoffs because what's going on in the ADC West right now is insane. And then you move on to the NDC side. Not much has changed at all. Still got the Kings versus the Marauders. However, that could change depending on this week as well. As in all the divisions are up for grabs still. So it'll be interesting to see who wins it. The Quetzales are now um, a wild card or are still in first in their division. And the Glaciers are also first in their division. And then you also have the... Seattle Skyline taking on the Columbus Jayhawks in the first round of the playoffs as well. And now for the playoff implications. Note, what's on here is not all of them. There's more implications than what's on here, as I've determined, as I had to use my brain power to think of some more um, that I don't really remember just right now. Because right now that everybody on Discord is saying that the Falcons are eliminated right now. No, no, no. No, they're not. That is false information. As I've already determined that they are still alive. And I literally just proved it. So. Like, seriously. If you have the same record for the fourth spot, for the third and final spot in the division, then you're not going home yet. You're not eliminated. It depends on if the Kings decide to win or not. It's up to the Kings if they're going to win the division, the spot or not. So now we take a look at the others. Here are the um, title games. Um, this... The Glaciers versus the Marauders game will be for the NDC West. Winner will get a first round bye. Same with the NDC East as well. The Quetzales versus the Jayhawks. Top two teams are basically playing each other this week. And then you have what Shig calls the ADC West bullcrap. That that's what I'm talking. That's what I've been talking about when I said that no one was eliminated from that, or no one's clinched the playoffs from that division yet. 
So it's definitely insane. Well, let's start off with um, the Gunslingers clinch a division with a win, and if the Winterhawks don't win by, like, 40. Um, let's take a look at that. Um, so, yeah, due to head-to-head, -head, I don't, th I think they've lost, a I don't think, that I think the series is tied between the two teams, that's why that's a factor. But they clinch the division if they win without them winning like that. But it's, but if the Gunslingers lose, it's a different story. The Denver Defenders clinch the division with a win, assuming the Bobcats don't win by, like, 50 points. Which, they're still alive to. Winnipeg clinch the division with a win. If the Gunslingers lose, they won't have to worry about point differential that much. Because, again, they have the same record. And if the Gunslingers lose, then Winnipeg has an opportunity to win the division. Denver would be eliminated with a loss and a Bobcats win. That is entirely true. Because, again, for the same reason, they have the same record, except it's between third and fourth place. Which is kind of similar to what's going on in the NDC East. Where third and fourth place have the same record in the last week of the season. And the Bobcats are also eliminated with a loss, and Defenders win. So, yeah. So, yeah, those are the playoff implications for this season. Definitely a wild one in the, in the ADC West. So yeah, now it's time to determine who the locale of the week is. And oh boy, this one's fun. Arizona Gunslingers. Reason? They got blown the frick out this week. How did you lose by that much? Like, if you take a team and get absolutely blown out by over... I don't even remember how much it was, but it was extremely large to the point where I had to put them up here. It's absolutely incredible to see the team who leads the division lose by so much that you just have to put them as the, as the freaking locale of the week. Congratulations, Arizona, on smoking that L pack. All right, moving on to... Everyone's favorite segment, the Toad Tier List. Now, there's been a couple of changes. No one's moved more than four spots, so... If you're in, like, a lower position, you're not really moving that far. Starting with the A Tier. Glaciers. The Glaciers are now back in first. As Freeholds, Glaciers are now back in number one. Shig's Marauders move up two spots to take up second place. Pax Quetzales, however, drop down two spots and fall to third. And the Columbus Jayhawks, owned by me, Miami Dolphins, I guess. We can also call it Me Dolphins. Drop from third down to fourth. And knocking him out of the podium. But still in A tier. Which means all these teams are really good teams still. They're, and they still have a lot to fight for. Moving on to B tier. The Pittsburgh Temper move up two spots after their win. Putting them in fifth in, in the, um, the Toad rankings. London Mafia will drop one spot because of their loss. Dropping them to sixth. The boss... The... Um, the Arizona Gunslingers, a.k.a. Locale of the Week, drops one spot as well. They're now in seventh in, in the league in terms of the Toad rankings. 
And for the Seattle Skyline, owned by Deluxe, they're going to stay put. They're going to stay in eighth like they were last week. All right, moving on to C tier. You have Courage and the Winnipeg Winterhawks moving up one spot to take ninth place. You have Chazzy and the Denver Defenders moving up two spots to take up 10th. And then you also have the Bobcats who have been promoted out of D tier, out of D -tier and moved up to C tier by moving up two spots, and now they are in 11th in the rankings. And for the Ottawa Hydra, they've dropped a staggering three positions. Previously, they were in ninth last week in the rankings. Now they're in 12th, as they just didn't really perform very well recently. All right, moving down to D tier. We start off with a typo on the king's end. That's supposed to be, you know what that symbol's supposed to be, not a question mark. But the Concord Kings stay put in 13th like they were last week. However, the Vipers get relegated out of C tier and sent to D tier because they ended up losing last week because they didn't really play at all. And it also... His toad is dead now because they are eliminated. And he is now in 14th in the toad rankings. My, my North Dakota Dragons have stayed in, are going to stay in 15th. As they just, nothing ever happens with them. And now this last team is the biggest surprise. I don't even know how they're still alive. The Michigan Falcons, owned by Mass. They got promoted out of E tier now. They're now in D tier. As the Falcons will now take 16th in the Toad rankings. Moving down, we have... The E tier next. All four of these teams are eliminated now. I've told you... I told you last week that by the end of the next week, everyone in E tier would be eliminated. And that's exactly what happened. And now we have the... Um, we have the... Even though the Philadelphia Cougars won, they still are dead. They moved up from 20th all the way up to 17th. In the Toad rankings. You also had the um, Bloodhounds. They have been relegated out of the D tier and sent to E tier. And they were now just eliminated this week. And now they're in 18th in the rankings. And the Boston Ravens, owned by Take Notes, were also eliminated this week. As now they sit in 19th despite their... Despite getting moved up in the rankings. And then you have the Jameston colonists who have been eliminated for a while now. Falling down to 20th in the rankings. Then you have the F tier teams. None of the four of them have moved. All four of them have not moved. As Blinks and his shooters are still in 21st. Robert and his Wranglers are still in 22nd. Extra and his Tacoma Renegades are still in 23rd. And finally, Amer, a.k.a. A.I. Galloway, and his Aztecs are still dead last in the rankings, in, sitting in 24th place. So, yeah. Now let's take a look at the schedule for the next week. For the next week, we have the um, Glaciers taking on the Marauders. Winner of that game will win the division, so that is an important game. The Skyline will take a, uh, this game. This game will not matter towards anything. So this game is not um, required to happen, which is the Seattle Skyline versus the South Dakota Vipers. 
They can play it if they want, but it's not going to be required. Same with the North Dakota Dragons versus the. Uh, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure I'm getting a forfeit win. I'm not. There's no way I'm not getting a forfeit win against the Aztecs. So, and seriously, the Aztecs are 0 and 13 because they haven't played a single freaking game. They're probably just gonna go winless for the season because they just don't play anything. Now, you also have something big. This next game does matter to the playoffs, but it's a forfeit win for the Michigan Falcons. Now, we'll talk about that, how that affects the standings. Because that means the Falcons are now 7-7, seven and seven, which means the Kings must win to make the playoffs. If the Kings lose, they're done and they're eliminated. If the So that is a big deal. And who do the Kings play? Well, the Kings play. Let me get through this real quick again. The Kings play the Boston Ravens. The only problem is that's also a forfeit win. Which would reverse the th- that situation. And it would eliminate... So technically the Falcons are eliminated. But I'm not going to put a skull in them. Or consider them eliminated in the standings. Because you never know. The Ravens could just magically show up. And want to play their game against them. So that's why I haven't killed them off yet but as if things stand the kings are going to the playoffs this next game also uh matters is the quizel the quizlets or quitsales versus the columbus jayhawks winner of that game wins that division um Now, this, the next game is the Shooters versus the Hydra. A Hydra probably going to get the win, but that game's not going to really matter. It's the Philadelphia Cougars versus the Pittsburgh Temper and the London Mafia versus the Columbus um, or versus the Jamestown Colonists. That will really matter. Now, both Philadelphia and Jamestown are not expected to play their games meaning Pittsburgh is most likely going to win the division because both of them aren't going to play. However, let's say, but I did see Menefel chat in the chat, in the DFL last week, which means there's a chance that he could decide he wants to play his game. And if Menefel wins that game and the London Mafia win theirs as well, London wins the division. So... It's all it's all about uncertainty going on in the ADC East as well as the ADC West as well cuz really it all depend the the playoffs on the line depend in the ND, in the ADC West depending on teams that have already been eliminated deciding if they want to play or not most likely they're not going to but if they do it's going to become a war zone. And then, of course, um, you have some very important games in the, a- in the ADC East. Or this is the ADC West, which is Winnipeg versus Denver and Arizona versus Los Angeles. As all four of these teams have not clinched the playoffs yet. One of those four teams are going home. The odds are that the Bobcats are going to be the the most likely team to be eliminated. But not by much. Because... um, It's all about trying not to be the worst. So... Yeah, it's going to be interesting what happens. All right, so we have reached the end of another presentation of the Discord Football League 
recap series, which this is the second to the last episode before we get to the playoffs. So we only got one more regular season episode, and then we are going to begin the playoffs. Question, questions that might get asked. Are we going to still do the toad rankings in the playoffs? Yes, we will. But there, and there's going to be dramatic changes to the toad rankings when the playoffs are about to start. So ne- after week 14 ends, you're going to see a lot of changes. Like you're, I'm going to, I'm talking moves of at least around seven to eight positions. It's going to be a wild, it's going to be wild. So yeah, thank you for watching this presentation of the DFL. And like always, we will see you in week 14.